Welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel. My name is Paco Rivera. Louis Bernard Gaskin was born on March 11th, 1967, two days before his 56th birthday. On this past March 9th, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a death warrant for Louis Gaskin, with the execution set to take place on April the 12th for two murders that he committed in the year 1989. He was also sentenced to life in prison for a 1986 cold case murder that he confessed to when he was arrested in 1989. Louis Gaskin was sentenced to death in the year 1990. He has been on death row now for 33 years. In November of the year 1986, 19-year-old Louis Gaskin was working at the Bunnell Cypress Company Sawmill in Bunnell, Florida, which is also the town where Gaskin lived. Gaskin had a co-worker at the mill whose name was Charles Martin Miller, who Gaskin had also borrowed money from on occasion. On November 20, 1986, Gaskin was due to pay back to Miller the money that was owed, but Gaskin had other ideas. He went to the trailer home of Charles Miller and out on the front porch, Gaskin pointed a gun at his co-worker. Miller began pleading for his life, but Gaskin shot and killed him anyway. Gaskin would later confess in 1989 that Charles Miller always had several hundred dollars on him and that he was planning on stealing what he can find, but that day he came away from Miller's home with nothing. That case went cold for the next three years with no leads on who the shooter was. During the summer of 1989, late one evening, a woman who worked as a retail manager was making a deposit for the company that she worked for outside a bank in Daytona Beach, Florida. She was about to drop the money bag into the bank's drop box when she was approached by now 22-year-old Louis Gaskin. Gaskin shot her, striking her in the arm, and fled with about $900 in her company's bank bag. That case would also go cold for the next few months. At about 10 o'clock in the evening, on the night of December 20, 1989, Louis Gaskin was at his home on Hyman Circle in Bunnell, Florida. He got dressed up in all black clothing, wanting to appear as best he could as a ninja warrior. He had actually nicknamed himself the ninja killer and people that knew him when later interviewed had stated that's what he called himself the media would later also refer to him as the ninja killer in their reporting lewis gaskin then left his house with the intent of finding and killing some strangers because in his mind that's what ninjas do only instead of ninja swords, he had armed himself with a 22 caliber rifle. Louis Gaskin arrived in his pickup truck near a home located at 10 Ripley Place in the city of Palm Coast, Florida, located only about an eight minutes drive from his home in Bunnell. That home on Ripley Place was owned by 56-year-old Robert Sturmfels and his wife, 55-year-old Georgette. Sturmfels. In 1989, the Sturmfels home was located at the end of a cul-de-sac, one way in and one way out. It was very isolated back then and surrounded by woods. Today, that area in the city of Palm Coast has grown a lot and has become a vibrant community of single-family homes. That night, Louis Gaskin parked his pickup truck in the woods after spotting some lights turn on at the windows of the Sturmfell's home. He got out and circled the house several times before stopping at a window where he had a clear view of Robert Sturmfell's sitting on the couch 
watching television. His wife, Georgette, was seated nearby. Gaskin then pointed his 22 caliber rifle at Robert and shot through the window, striking Robert once in the chest. He saw Robert stand up and clutch his chest, grieving in pain. He then saw Georgette rush over to her husband, who probably thought that he was experiencing a heart attack. That's when Gaskin then shot Georgette, but it was not fatal. He then made his way into the house as Georgette began running away from him. He fired several more shots, striking Georgette in the back and then Robert. After killing the couple, Gaskin later proceeded to rummage throughout the house, gathering various items such as some lamps, a clock, a VCR, and some jewelry. He took the items back to his pickup truck and drove off. But Louis Gaskin wasn't done yet. Gaskin then arrived outside a home a few blocks away from the Sturmfelds, located at one Ricker place, a home belonging to Joseph and Nadine Rector. Some reports have Nadine's name listed as Mary Rector. Gaskin chose that house after seeing a light come on in the window. He made his way to the telephone wires for the house and cut them. He then circled the house looking for occupants through the windows, but couldn't see anyone. He went around to the back of the house and got the idea to throw loose debris from around the yard, such as pieces of logs, rocks, and other objects, onto the roof of the house to create noise, hoping that the occupants would move around wanting to investigate where the sounds were coming from. And that's exactly what happened. The Rectors immediately got worried about intruders on the property, so Nadine picked up the telephone to call 911, but the line was dead. Remember that in 1989, very few people had cell phones. The couple then went into the master bedroom at the rear of the house to try another landline telephone and that's when Gaskin spotted them and shot through the window, striking Joseph Rector in the chest. Joseph and Nadine, realizing that Joseph had just been shot, then, thinking quickly, got the car keys and ran to the front door of the house. Joseph opened the door slightly and peeked out. He even hollered to see if anyone was there. And when it appeared the way was clear, both of them ran and quickly got inside the car. As the car was driving away, Louis Gaskin appeared from the rear of the house and shot a slew of bullets at the car. However, luckily none of them struck Joseph or Nadine. The two of them then drove to the hospital emergency room and police were notified. During the ride to the hospital, Joseph was actually saying his goodbyes to his wife because he didn't think that he was going to survive. Fortunately, Joseph and Nadine did survive after escaping the madman on their property. Unfortunately, neither of them got a good look at Louis Gaskin. On the following afternoon, police and detectives from Palm Coast were still at the home of Joseph and Nadine Rector, trying to develop leads and gathering evidence on the shooting the night before. That's when the mailman stopped to deliver mail and said to the detectives, hey, you guys might want to go have a look at a house on Ripley Place. It looks like the house was broken into. So the detectives then went to 10 Ripley Place to investigate and sure enough, upon entering, discovered the two dead bodies of Robert and Georgette Sturmfels. The cases of the murders of the Sturmfels and the attempted murders of the rectors on the same night would remain cold for about a week with very little leads in those cases. 
Louis Gaskin was dating a woman named Janice Gilliard. Sometime around Christmas Day 1989, Gaskin arrived at the home of his girlfriend, Janice Gilliard, placed several items in her hands as presents and said, Merry Christmas. Gaskin would later tell Janice's brother, his girlfriend's brother, that the stuff he gave to Janice he had stolen from a house and that he had killed the couple that was living there. So one day Janice's brother calls the Bunnell Police Department. He asked to remain anonymous and told someone on the phone, my sister's boyfriend told me that he stole a bunch of items last week after killing two people and I think this has something to do with those murders that I saw on the news. Bunnell police then contacted Palm Coast police and passed along the information they had just received. A search warrant was issued for the home of Janice Gilliard and sure enough items stolen at the home of Robert and Georgette Sternfels were recovered there. The next step was to arrest Louis Gaskin. On December 29, nine days after the murders, detectives arrived at his home at 803 Hyman Circle in Bunnell, and soon after arriving, Louis Gaskin walked out the front door casually and allowed himself to be handcuffed. A detective would later say that Gaskin had that expression on his face of, okay, you got me. He gave every indication of knowing exactly why detectives were there the moment he stepped out the door. During the ride back to the police station, Gaskin told the detectives that if someone gets him a pack of black and miles, he promises to tell them everything they want to know. The detective jumped on the offer by stopping at a gas station and purchasing a pack of Black and Mild before continuing on to the station. Once in an interview room, Gaskin was allowed to smoke the Black and Milds to his heart's content, and the detectives just had to listen to Gaskin talk. All was video and audio taped. Not only did Gaskin confess every detail about what happened at the Sturmfels and Rector's home nine days earlier, he also told police that a few months before, he was the one who shot a woman making a bank deposit in Daytona Beach, injuring her and taking the money. And that three years earlier, he had killed a co-worker that he wanted to rob. All these cases were cold no more. Gaskin also told the detectives that he was controlled by the devil who wanted him to dress as a ninja and go out and kill people. Louis Gaskin was also evaluated by a psychologist named Dr. Jack Rotstein. Reports later submitted to the court state that Gaskin admitted to Dr. Ratstein that he masturbated in his pickup truck before killing the Sturmfells, that he penetrated Mrs. Sturmfells after she was dead, and that he wanted to keep Mrs. Rector alive because he wanted to rape her. When Gaskin spoke of the murder of his co-worker, Charles Martin Miller, in 1986, he had said that Miller's pleas for mercy did not bother him. Louis Gaskin was also described in reports as a sexually deviant, extremely violent man who admitted killing three people, wounding a lady in a robbery, and attempting to kill Mr. Rector so that he could rape Mrs. Rector without interference. With that said, it appears if the state of Florida has their way that the days of Louis Gaskin's aspirations as a wannabe evil ninja will end on April the 12th. A bit of advice. It might be a good idea to keep the curtains fully closed 
over your windows late at night. Please remember to subscribe for more Death Row and upcoming execution stories. I am Paco Rivera. Bye for now. Thank you.